Hello, I'm Wendy from 3D Worldwide. In this video we will learn how to create the Rubik's Cube using the Array Tool. The basic use for the Array Tool is for moving, rotating, scaling and cloning objects. So let's get started. First of all let's go to the main toolbar, Customize. And we're going to scroll down and select our unit setup. Now here in the dialog, we're just going to select Generic Units, then press OK. Let's go over to the Geometry panel. Now here behind Standard Primitives, from the drop-down menu, let's select Extended Primitives. We're going to use a sham box for this video. We'll just drag out a sham box of any size here in the Perspective viewport. Let's go over to the Modify panel now. Here we can type in 20 for length, 20 for width, 20 for height, and then fill it, we'll just type in 1. Let's drop down now to fill it segments and we'll type in 3. Now we should have some nice smooth rounded corners and edges. Just press out W to maximize the viewport. Let's right click on the object and we'll convert it to an editable poly. Now let's go up to the main toolbar, right click on the select and move tool, and now here in the dialog, under Absolute World, let's right click on the bottom spinners and bring each axis back to zero. This will center our object right in the center of the grid. We could have also done this down here in the Transform panel at the bottom of the screen. We're going to use the Array tool, so we'll go up to Tools, we'll scroll down the menu and we'll find Array. Let's have a wee look here in the panel. First of all, let's look at the type of object we want to create. We can choose between copy, instant and reference. We're going to choose copy. Now we can come over to the array dimensions. The first ID and account will type in three, as we want three copies. We want to make three copies or two copies in the original along the Z axis. So what we can do now is, we'll go back up to the panel, and here under Move, in the Z axis, we'll type in 20. We're going to type in 20 because our cube is 20 by 20 by 20. Now we can drop down and press the Preview button. Just move the panel out of the way. You can see we have two more that's been created right on top of the original. Let's create two more columns, the same as this one. This time we're going to use the 2D in our array dimension. So we'll come here, turn on the 2D. We'll type in 3. We want to create them along the X axis. So let's go back to the panel and we're just going to type in here 20. Don't press the OK button yet. Turn off the preview button and then turn it back on again. Let's have a look. I'll just move the panel. There we are. We have our three rows. Let's create three more rows. Come back over to the panel. Before we move on, let's just drop over here and have a look here where it says total of arrays. Notice we have nine now. OK. Let's come back over now. We're going to use our 3D, so we'll just turn this on. We're going to type in 3 because we want 3 more rows. And we want our rows to go along our Y axis. Just have a look here, along the Y axis. So I'll come back to the panel and here under Y, I'll type in 20. Notice how the total arrays have changed. Before it was 9, now we have 27 arrays. Let's go and turn off our preview and then turn it back on again. OK, I think that's worked. Let's have a look. Move the panel out of the way. Here we are. We have our 27 cubes. Now we can go back into the panel and press the OK button to save our settings. This is going to be our basic shape for our Rubik Cube. Rubik Cube has six faces, six sides. Each side is a different colour. We're going to create now a small object, which is going to be our, like our sticker to place on each cube. I'm just going to orbit around. I'm going to go to the top wheel here in the top and click on the word front. This will straighten my object. 
I'm going to select the bottom cube, press Z on the keyboard to zoom in. We want the color sticker to be the same size as this side of the cube. So to do that, let's go over to our polygon mode, select polygon. I'm going to select this polygon. Then I'm going to come over to the panel, scroll down under Edit Geometry, and click on Detach. Now here in the Detach dialog, I can choose between Detach as Element or Detach as Clone. I'm going to select Detach as Clone. I'll just leave, leave the name as it is, and then press OK. Now I have a separate object. I'll just turn off Editable Poly a minute. Now we can select our new object. Let's go to our top uh, main toolbar and click on Select by Name. We'll scroll down right to the bottom and here's our object, object number one, and press OK. We'll start by changing the color of the material. I'm going to use a custom color. So I'll just click here on the small button for uh, custom colors and I'm going to select a nice bright green and then press OK. This is going to be our first side. It will be green. Before we move on, let's change the pivot point. We'll go up to the hierarchy, effect pivot only, and then in alignment, click on center to object. Then go back and turn off effect pivot only. Let's scale our object. Just here in the center, we'll grab the center, and I'm going to scale it in slightly. Mm, something like that, so I can just see the edges a bit better. That's a bit better. I'm going to round the corners of this object. I'm just going to drag it out a wee bit. Let's have a look. Let's go over to our modify panel now, and we'll select our polygon mode. I'm just going to scroll down now under Edit Polygons and click on the small settings icon for Extrude. By default it's set to 10. Let's just bring this down. I'm going to bring it down to something like 0 0.2. 0 .2. I'll just type it in. 0 0.2 and then press OK. Press it twice. Let's just zoom in here a wee bit. I'm going to select the small edge here, the small corner edge. I'm going to go back to the panel and select my edge mode, select the edge, and then click on ring. Just make sure I have the other corner edges. Let's go back over to the panel now. We'll scroll down under edit edges and we'll click on the small settings icon for chamfer. Let's just have a wee look in the caddy. We're going to make a small curve here around the corners. I'll leave the chamfer amount set to 1. Now here in Edged Segments, I'm going to type in 1, 2, let's have a look. See it's rounding off. Maybe one more. I think I'll leave it at 5. And then press OK. There we are. That's nice and rounded. Make sure we have all four corners. Okay, now we can probably scale it up a wee bit more. So I'll select my scale tool. And we'll just scale it up here a wee bit in the center. Turn up my edible poly first. And then I'll scale it out right in the center. There we are. We don't want it to go right to the edges because the edges are curved. Let's have a wee look. With the Select and Move tool, I'm just going to drag it in. Let's have a look. Something like that should be fine. Why don't we chamfer these edges also around here? Okay, so I shall select the polygon mode again. I'm going to go back over to the panel and in Selection, hold the Control key down and at the same time I'm going to press Edge. This will convert my polygon into my outer edges. Let's go back over to the panel now and under Edit Edges, I'll click on the small settings icon for chamfer. We only want a very, very tiny chamfer, so I'm just going to type in 0 0.02. And now here in the segments, I'll just type in 1. And then press OK. Let's just zoom in to have a wee look at what we've created. It's only a very tiny chamfer, but it just might catch a bit of light 
I mean, something like that. We'll just turn off our editable palette. Just move out. Now we have our first sticker. Let's make some copies. There's several ways we could make copies, but as this video is about the array tool, we'll use the array tool. Come up to Tools, select Array, and now let's have a little look here in the panel again. It's set by default to what it was before when we last used it. Let's just press Reset All Parameters, and we'll start anew. We're going to create three copies. So we'll come over here to Object Type and select Copy. Count, we'll type in 3, and here in Z, in the Move, we'll type in 20, and then press Preview. Here we are, the same as before, we have our three objects. We'll do the same as we did before for the next rows. Click on 2D, we'll type in 3, then here along the X axis, we'll type in 20 again. Press the Preview button, then press OK to save the settings. OK, we have the first side. Let's select all of them now. We'll hold the control key down and select each one of these objects. We're going to create a group. I have all nine of them. Go up to the main toolbar, click on Groups, Group. Now here in the panel, I'm just going to leave the name as it is and then press OK. If you look over here in the panel, we can see that the name Group 1 is in bold letters. Okay, just before we go any further, I'm just going to orbit around and I'm going to select all these 27 cubes, just the cubes, and I'm going to change the color. So I'll click on the color slot, select the black color, and then press OK. There we are, that's looking a bit better now. We have one green face. Let's carry on and we'll create the rest of the faces. Let's select the object and go and get our array tool again. Okay, here in the panel. I'm just going to pop down to the bottom of the panel and click on Reset Parameters. We'll start anew. I'm going to say I want to copy. Here in the first ID, I'll type in two. I only want two copies this time. One will be the original and the new one, which I'm going to place at the other side of our queue. We want to place it along our Y axis. Just move our, our dial out of the way a minute. There we are. It's the Y axis. This time I'm going to type in, we have 20 units plus 20 units plus 20 units, that means 60. We're going to move it along 60 units along our Y axis and then press that preview button. I'm just going to orbit around and here it is. It's here, but we have a small issue. It's back to front. That's all right, we'll have to rotate it. So we can come back up to our panel and here under rotate, we're going to rotate it along the Z axis. Just type in 180. It'll rotate along 180 degrees. Turn off preview and then back on again. And there we are. Let's press OK just to save our settings. Let's orbit around. And we have now two faces. Very good. Let's select the one that we've just made, which is group two. And we're going to change the color. We'll use another custom color. This time I think we can select a nice bright blue. So I'll just come here to the blue slot, bring this up, add color, and then press OK. Here we are. That's the second color now. Wouldn't it be good if we could make a copy of both these faces at the same time? Let's select the front one, hold the control key down, and we're going to turn around and make sure we have group two at the same time. So we've got both groups together. Let's go up and select our array tool. Now here on the panel, I'm going to drop down and just reset all the parameters again. Let's go and select our object type. We want to copy. We want two copies, one which will be the original and a new one. This time we're going to type it in rotate as we're going to rotate it here around the side. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees along our Z axis. And then just press preview. There we are, that was quick. Let's just orbit around and make sure we have both. Yes, we do. Let's press OK again on the dial to save our settings. 
Very good. Now we have two greens and two blues. Let's select group three and we'll come over to our color slot and we'll change the color. Go to Customs Colors and I'll select white. And there we are, we'll just add this white. Now we'll orbit around, add this color. We'll select um, the group four here in the color slot. Go to Custom Colors. We can make a nice bright yellow and then press OK. We have four colors. Now we just need to create two more for the top and the bottom. Keep the last two groups selected, the yellow one and the white one. Make sure we have both of them at the same time. Let's go back to our array tool. Let's pop back up to our rotate column. Now here in the Z, I'm just going to right click on the dial and bring it back to zero. We'll stay in our rotate column and we'll move along to our Y axis. Just type in 90 and then we'll press preview. Let's see if it works. I'll just move this out of the way. Okay, I'm going to orbit around. I'm going to go back to the panel now and click on OK to save our settings. We have all six spaces. Now we can change the colors on the top and the bottom. Select the top one first, the group six. Click on the color setting. Let's go back to our custom colors. And I'm going to select a red. I'm just going to bring all these dials here to the corner, then here at the top, add color, and then press OK. Now I'm going to orbit around. Here underneath, I'll change the color. I'll select the bottom one, custom colors. And I think the last color on the Rubik cube could be an orange. So we'll just make a nice orange. Press OK. And that's finished. How's that? There's our Rubik cube. Just orbit around and we have six different faces, different colors. If you want to move the cubes individually, you'll have to ungroup the objects first. So to do that, we'll just select the objects here, come here to groups, press ungroup, click anywhere in the viewport and now we can individually select each object. Do the same for the rest of the sides. I hope you find this video helpful. Thank you for watching. Enjoy.